We've witnessed the European debt crisis over the past year. Countries like Spain and Portugal are making the same mistakes as Greece and Ireland, and so on and so on. So what's the lesson here? Today in Spain, they are sporting Europe's highest rate of unemployment at 20.5%. By the way, that's the country that led the way on the green jobs. Their debt is 53% of GDP. Right next door, Portugal. They're at 11% unemployment. Their debt is 76% of GDP. Greece, just when you thought it couldn't get any worse for them, it did. Their debt hit a staggering 120% of GDP, and they now have 12.2% unemployment. And now the spillover to Ireland. Unemployment is at 14%. Their debt has worsened to 65% of GDP. You see, we're all tied together now, and Europe especially so. They're all tied together. What happens to one spreads to the others. It's dominoes. Portugal is spooked. Spain is spooked. They can't withstand Ireland causing a shock to the system with bad news because they will topple. We've talked about this on the program before almost a year ago. I talked about the dominoes falling. Do you remember? This is when we are, I think we were just talking about uh, Greece, and at the time, Germany was telling Greece the same thing that Greece is now telling Ireland. Well, it didn't work for Greece, now did it? It didn't help their situation much. They're still rioting in the streets. Their situation seems to be getting worse and worse, and yet the EU is doing it all over again. It's not going to take us as long to reach their point of no return. Will we reach the point of Ireland or Greece? Oh, yeah, we will. How do I know? Well, do you remember the $600 billion bailout? Here it is from the Wall Street Journal. Bucking the Federal Reserve's efforts to push interest rates lower, investors are selling off U.S. government debt, driving rates in many cases to their highest levels in more than three months. In other words, you know that whole print the money thing that they said is going to keep the interest rates or the yield so people will be able to buy it? Interest rate? Yeah. Yeah, that highest levels in more than three months Uh oh it means the exact opposite of what the fed told us would happen is happening we also talked to david buckner for his thoughts on the u.s mirroring europe the united states could on its books on a balance sheet exactly mirror portugal greece spain ireland on its books as Glenn has indicated, not only will the balance sheet look similar to many of these company, or countries, but our actual behavior will, will start to gravitate toward mirroring what's happened in those countries. There's contagion. There's the contagious nature of what happens in Greece. You're seeing with many of the, the, the austerity programs that have, been provided, that have been initiated across Europe and other places, that that contagion, we don't want to cut our benefits. We don't want to cut our retirement. That contagion is spilling over into other countries. So as goes Greece, it will have an impact on Germany and the UK and the Netherlands and other and France and other countries. As goes Europe, that will have an impact on the United States. David, I want to um, I want to talk to you a little bit about the theory that it can't happen here. I want to start with Greece, and I, 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 because Greece is the one that originally they said, oh, nothing is going to happen. Greece is fine, right? Greece was fine. I was on the air. Did anybody remember a year and a half ago? And I was talking about Europe, and I said, watch Europe. It's going to start to fall apart, and it, it, they're going to start rioting in the streets. And I read the book, right? Um, was I nuts at that time? Your friends all said, crazy right and Greece was the one to watch Greece and France now here's Greece Greece became the leader right and Greece was the one that they said if it's gonna fall it will pull everybody down. Well, they, they saw a potential domino. It's the contagion. The, the economists refer to it as contagion. So you can start with something very small like Greece. And as you look at here, Greece is not a huge component of the European community, but it starts a contagion. And they're concerned that if that starts, then what happens to the others and the dominoes? Because many of them are ensuring Greece's safety. Okay. So if it starts to roll, it would Come start here. with Greece. Come here. Uh, um, Greece... Uh, Greece is a state of the European Union. It is. Except they're um, a capital S. It's a state, okay? Uh, sovereign nation. 
So it's a state in the European Union. Tell me about Greece. It makes up a, a small percentage in terms of its economy. And when we talk about the European community or the European economy, it's only about 2.5% of the overall economy, the GDP. All right, so it's 2.5% of the economy. Small percentage. It is the 27th largest. Not a huge piece of the world economy. 27th largest economy in the world. Okay. Not big. Remember, this is a domino. If it falls, it, could, it will spread to all of Europe, which will make Europe fall, which will make all of us fall. Got it? GDP represents $300 billion. Not a, not a big piece of change in the global economy. Okay. And then as a part of the overall European community, look at the 300 billion compared to the 16 trillion, which this is the largest community, if you're talking about all of them aggregated together, the largest economy This in the world. is what they're worried about stopping. They're saying that this 300 billion, uh, 300 billion if it goes, can stop. Significantly damage the rest Got it. by contagion. Okay, so what they're saying is, they told us and everybody else, you have to bail out because this $300 billion economy cannot stop. Or it will destroy Well, this. as far back as 2006, they were saying this can't really fall. And then you start to see 07 and 08, and they start to see it move, and they got nervous about the contagion. They said, you've got to bail this out now. It's only 2.5%. No, you've got to bail this out because the contagion, what it happened, what ha the domino could destroy the 16 trillion. If Europe falls, how does that affect the rest of the world? Well, the, if you start with the, the concept that only 2% could impact 16 trillion, you can imagine that if this, the world's largest economy, which Europe is, if it falls, it's the largest, not the smallest, it's the largest economy that's falling. Do you understand so far? 2.5% can stop the world's largest economy. So that would then domino into the rest of the world. Now, let me show you the small s state, because that's really, that's the difference. EU, they got all the stars on the flag, just like our original have all the stars in the flag. They're just capital S state, small s state, but it's the same exact concept. We have 50 of them. California makes up this Greece is 2.5 of the EU economy. Are you ready? Yeah. Of the US GDP, this is just California. How much does it make up? 13%. 13%. You ready? Greece <laughs> is the 27th largest economy in the world. California? Eight. GDP? 1.8 trillion. Not 300 billion. And the U.S. economy, remember, Europe is 16 trillion. The U.S. economy is? Just shy of 14 trillion. Bigger economy, European 16 trillion, US 13, Greece is 2.5%, California is 13%. California, is there anybody here? Is there anybody, any of your friends? Okay, they don't know about Europe. Does anyone think California is going to fail? Is there anyone that doesn't think that California has to get a bailout from the federal government? Right? Okay, now let me show you. Flip, flip your chalkboard over, will you, David? Does anybody, does anybody remember when I talked about mutually assured economic destruction? Patricia, could, can you, could you explain it? Do we have a microphone over here? Could, do you remember it well enough to explain what, what it is? Go ahead. Well, originally it was um, with uh, weapons, nuclear weapons. If right. one country does it, let's all build up our arsenal so it, it causes other countries not to move. It Correct. kind of freezes it. We'll blow each other up. We'll blow up. each other up. And it's the same thing with the economy. If one country goes down, the others will follow. Right. All right. So we know our nation is broke in more ways than one. So next, the solutions. Our whole system in America has been broken through corruption, through overspending, through failed policies and failed principles. We have abandoned everything that made us great. So how do we get back to being great again? Somebody asked me um, over a year, year and a half ago, Glenn, where, where, how do we get out of it? How do we, where do we go? 
This has taken me over a year to put together. It's called Broke. Our nation is broken. And there are no easy answers. None. If you look at this up here, what is this? Do you even recognize what this is? Which districts are these? Well, they're not districts, actually. They're not districts. If you put them back together, you'll see that it's not a district. You just don't recognize it anymore. That's the real, that's the real problem here. How do we even put it back together? How do we even put it back together? That's the real trick. It ain't easy. Yeah, go ahead, laugh all you want. It ain't easy. We have to put it together. Our finances are broken. Our spirit is broken. Our faith and our values are broken. And promises have been broken. I have to tell you, it's going to hurt to put it all together. It is. It's going to take a while, and it's going to hurt every single one of us. But in the long term, if we do the right things, we'll be better off for it. We've turned our backs on the Constitution. We've gone for the easy thing. Our country is broken financially. It is broken in spirit, broken in faith, broken in values. And you know it. We're now at a crucial point of reassembling the country. The first part of this book, the first third of this book is, how did we get here? The second part is the crime of the century and the cover-up. The cover-up will blow your mind. If you read Common Sense, this is Common Sense on steroids. And then the last is, what do we do about it? How do we fix it? What's the plan? We need drastic fixes. We need to amend the Constitution if necessary, and I don't like that idea, but I think it's necessary. We need a balanced budget amendment, one with teeth. For instance, I recommend in the book, spending cannot be higher than the prior year's amount. At the end of the fiscal year, if the budget still isn't balanced, the difference would be cut from the budget of the next fiscal year. Federal expenses cannot be pushed onto the states. We need to make serious budget cuts. Do you know that George Washington only had four cabinet departments? Today we have 15. Earlier on this program, earlier this year, we worked with experts to cut the budget by 24% in a week. We did it. The Department of Education. You know that 81% of state aid, 81% of all of the budget goes to state aid? The Energy Department, 47% of all of its budget, 47, almost half, is dedicated to departmental purchases. What are you buying? There is so much more in the book. Tough solutions, things that you won't like. But this is the thing that I have put together because you asked me to do it. What is the answer, Glenn? Restore our truth, our trust, and our treasure. There are simple things that we can do. There are common sense things that we can do, and one of the things that I address is the obscene amount of money that we are paying our politicians in Washington. I want to show you. This is the average guy in the U.S. Army. In the Army, they serve for four years. They get out with a specialist, as a specialist. As a specialist, they make $22,676. Four years. Pick up a gun and go stand in the line of fire because your country asks you to for $22,676. They ain't doing it for money. The average American makes $50,462. That's your salary. The average American, $50,000. Now here's where it gets good. The average salary of a federal employee, you know, the ones who can never get the paperwork right, 